call this work session, uh, November 1st work session to order. Uh, with our fire chief, Harvey, what do you have for us? Uh, a couple things. One is uh, through the, the county fire marshal has a, uh, had received a grant for smoke detectors. And so we've been able to replenish our supply of smoke detectors with 10-year batteries through the county fire marshal's office. So we have plenty of detectors available if anybody needs them or you, if you know of somebody that needs them. Not to interrupt your work, and since we're on TV, where can they call or how do they get in touch with somebody? Uh, they, uh, some of the calls before have gone just to Maria, to the manager's so office. So you want them to call the borough, and then the borough will notify the yeah, that's, fire that's department, the, and then you guys will go out and install it, correct? Yes. Yeah, that's all right with Maria. I, I mean, she's taking the calls and called me directly. I just want, for you're saying we have them, so I just want people at home to know how can they get one. And if it's a senior citizen or somebody, so we're saying call the 215-788-3828 number, press 10, right? Ask for Maria, and she'll take all the information, and then the fire department will make an appointment to go out and install the smoke detector. Yeah. That'll work. Um, the second thing we did, we did, we finished the fire prevention program in the schools. Uh, that went real well. Um, and, and I understand, Mr. Trudeau, you had a, a question about fire drills for the high rise um, from the last meeting. What we'll do is, what we did before, is we'll set up a fire prevention program, but we don't conduct fire drills. I know. In the high -rise. But you'll let me know when you plan on going yes. over. Okay, thank you. And we'll, and we'll set that up. Uh, probably as soon as the, the next thing I have on my list is the uh, insurance services um, office will be in at some point in November. We don't have a, a time and a date yet to do an evaluation of the water system and the fire department. And from those surveys, they that's how they calculate the insurance rates for everyone. Um, and so we've been prepping for that. I think we'll... We will be able to improve our rating, which should have some effect, positive effect on the insurance rates in town. And the last thing I have is that this, this Sunday will be the uh, SEPTA, Amtrak, mass casualty incident at Hunter Wilson starting at about 9 o'clock. The first part is a, uh, a police operation, and about 9.30, the fire and EMS uh, portion will start, and that will run till about uh, 11 o'clock. And from that, then we'll break that down and, and complete that. That's it. Does anybody have any questions for Herbie? Jimmy, I know you just walked in, but all we're doing is he's updating us like he normally does. That's fine. Anything for Herbie? No. Last month, we conducted a number of uh, aggressive driving details you know, throughout town. We focused mainly, though, on uh, only 13. And for the month, we had 83 citations. <clears throat> Uh, we're continuing to send our officers to uh, some excellent training. We sent two officers to a, a top-notch narcotics school, and also our detective uh, completed another phase of latent fingerprint training, at this time concentrating on palm prints. And uh, both those schools were at no cost to the borough. And we almost completed our firearms qualification for the year. Just a few more officers have to qualify probably the end of this month or the beginning of next month. The event planning committee, we met with the Christmas parade committee, and everything is go. Uh, we finalized our plans. November 27th, Saturday, is the holiday parade, Christmas parade, and the 28th would be a rain date. And uh, Ms. Trinnell and I, we went around, took a look at the uh, possible 10-minute uh, parking uh, situation that we're looking at for, uh, for Mill Street. So I'm sure you'll have something to say about that. And, uh, um, that's it. Just wanted to make sure you had one. Any questions for the chief? Uh, Betty. Um, Mr. Porter, I don't think you were here last month when um, Lorraine had brought up, and this is on Lorraine's behalf, that she wanted to see some patrolling around um, Fifth Ward and Sons of Italy on Friday nights and Saturday nights when they're having their parties. All the neighbors are complaining yes. about some outbursts and some nonsense going on over there. Um, have we been doing that? Do, you know, yes, it was, it was placed in the past on both for all the officers. Do, have you had any complaints? Do you know, any well, I haven't had any complaints, and I don't know if she has. She asked me to bring it up tonight. 
Um, I, I would like to also add to that list um, Finney McGee's bar around 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning when they let out. Apparently, sometimes they're drunk and making noises, and there's a lot of you know homes around there. So if you know, maybe if we could have our officers patrol at that time, that would be great. You know, helpful. And that's it. Anybody else have anything for the chief? Just to, uh, Lorraine is uh, sick in bed with strep throat. Uh, Pat sick in bed, and the mayor is. Uh, called and he's prepping for a test for tomorrow. So uh, just so everybody knows where everybody is. Okay, I'm going to start instead of, I got several things to discuss with everybody tonight. First of all, we need to schedule, it's that time of year again, so we need to start scheduling budget meetings. I looked at the calendar tonight. We're meeting tonight, which is the first. We're meeting again the 8th. <clears throat> so I think we should just stay on Mondays and go, I think it's the 15th. Am I right, Mr. Dillon? Yes. We'll go to 15th with a budget meeting, and we'll keep the 16th open also, <coughs> which is a Tuesday. See how we make out the first two nights, and if we have to come back... Uh, we need to pass this and advertise it by the December's meeting so we could adopt it in December. <coughs> May I make a suggestion, please? Sure. Can we please try to stay away from Tuesday nights because it is the only night that I have to work and I don't get done till 8 sure. or at least, you know. You guys want to start at 6 o'clock on Monday? That's fine. Instead of 7? Because the first night will probably be the longest night, and we'll just run through a line you by. Do a Tuesday night started at 7:30. I can always come right after work with my, you know. Well, let's start Monday. We'll have uh, the manager advertise Monday and Tuesday, or you want to advertise Monday and Wednesday? Monday and Wednesday will work better for me, but it's okay. up to everybody else. Monday and Wednesday, so we'll go to 15th and 17th. Please, thank and, you. Yeah, uh, let's thank see you. how it goes after Monday. We may cancel that meeting. I mean, right now the map. The manager and Angie and uh, we've been working on this budget constant. It's not something we just open up today. It's it's an ongoing thing for the year. So everybody's got a pretty good handle on it. The second thing is uh, I spoke to a Mark McLean. I don't know if everybody remembers Mark. He was the gentleman who introduced uh, John Doster the firefighter, the oldest firefighter in the country. He's thinking about putting together, since it's the 10th anniversary of 9-11 in September, some kind of a march or a walk uh, through town and organize the whole thing. And he just wanted to make sure that council would be on board with this, that we would support it. I told him I don't think anybody on council would not be in favor of this. But there's a lot that has to be put into this. He's willing to take this undertaking on. And his wife does the parade, and they do an excellent job with that, her and Ellen. So I met with Mark the other day for about an hour and went through. He wants to bring firefighters and policemen in from New York City. And my recommendation is that he meets... Uh, with Herbie, the chief, Merle, who's involved in everything, the mayor, and start putting a format together and see how we're going to pull this off. But it's going to take a good six to eight months to prepare for this event. So I'm sure everybody in council is okay with us giving him the authority to proceed with this. Uh, if not, let me know. Next thing is the Christmas tree lighting will be Friday, November 26th. Again, uh, if council does not have a problem with it over the last couple years, borough council has paid to put the tree up, the lighting, uh, to really, we have the equipment now and the guys are starting to enjoy doing it. I know Kevin Everett does a good job on it with, with the rest of the borough workers. So again, we'll be picking up that expense to cut the tree down. We get a tree donated, but we have to cut it and get it here and install it and everything. So if Borough Council does not have a problem with that, again, we will sponsor that event. 
the parking committee that we discussed months ago. Mr. Dillon's going to get a letter out to a couple people. There, I think there's only three or four people that showed an interest. If anybody else is interested, please contact the manager because the beginning of the year in January, we would like to start this committee. The shredding event was canceled last time. It's scheduled for November 13th, which is 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. out front of the firehouse here on Pond in front of Borough Building. Uh, these flyers are going to be posted, and it's also on the TV channel. So, and if I didn't get this done by a certain time, there were a couple people that I think I'm going to have to go shred their stuff myself. But uh, again, it's uh, November 13th from 9 to 1 p.m. Every borough resident could bring whatever they want. We're going to do it behind the Senior Citizen Center. The parking lot the parking over there. Parking lot. By we okay. It'll be easier. All right. Safer. There'll be signage out front. I'm sure to let them know where to go. We had uh, a registration on our recreation board, which is the recreation authority for the rink. Uh, Mr. Catrocci resigned after several years of serving on the rink. He no longer could put the time in. And we also had a debt of... Uh, Anthony Marino, who passed away. So we need to fill two vacancies on the Recreation Authority. If any member of council has anybody interested, please submit their name to the borough manager by maybe November 15th. <clears throat> Excuse me. And if anybody at home is watching and they're interested in serving on that authority, call again to the borough and submit your name and the manager during the month of November. Hopefully we can fill this position at the December meeting and they'll take their office in January. So we have two positions again on the authority. We also have a resignation on the zoning uh, board. Mr. Joe Gasper, who has served on that board faithfully for, I don't know how many years, 14, 14 years, has uh, resigned at the end of the year. He will serve until December this meeting. So we're looking for a member on the zoning board. Again, if any member of council has somebody, submit their name and qualifications. This is a position that Hopefully there's some qualifications involved because it build, deals with building to the manager. And uh, if anybody at home is interested, again, call the borough and uh, give the manager your name and they'll pass that on to council. The Public Works Department yard is, uh, I would say, about 70%. We're hoping by the end of next week to have that finally cleaned up. We're meeting tomorrow morning at 9.30 with the engineers to see what's left and what else has to be uh, cleaned up and prepped. If everybody noticed, uh, Councilman Lutz and Councilwoman Cullen met behind the high school with myself, the manager, and George Waldron and discussed about we had all that dirt down there to spread it over the site and get all that rocks and stuff out of there and make it a safe area. On Friday we got an email from Conrail saying that they, had, they were starting Monday morning and we had Jim call them back and ask them if they would delay starting one week to give us time to meet tonight and to get resolved how we wanted to handle this but they said they had to come in Monday <clears throat> excuse me so we contacted Danucci Late Friday afternoon, they came in Saturday. They start bringing dirt in. By, I'm sure you've seen the truckloads of dirt coming in. And they leveled all the areas out where the fence was going. And they also cleaned up all the areas behind where the fence was going. So that it looks good when it's done. I don't know if anybody had a chance to drive down Trenton Avenue. But the richness that that fence brings to this walking path is just amazing. And... I think Wednesday they're supposed to come in and hydro seed 
the whole area. So when that grass grows and with the wrought iron fence, or the, it's really going to be beautiful to, to walk down there and see that site. So again, we had to move the dirt off site. We were going to bring it to Warren Snyder. Instead, we used it on our own property, and we're also using some behind the high school. So I don't know if anybody has any comments or questions on that. Um, Ralph, let me say, uh, first of all, that I've gotten a lot of compliments on uh, on the project. I think Danucci did a good job. Fence looks great. Um, I've got a couple of small concerns, and I was going to bring them up tonight. One of them is there's a... Uh, an old concrete standard. I guess they must have had to pull at the corner of Trenton and uh, where the tank was. And Hayes. And it might be three feet in diameter and a couple. Tank of with the legs up in the air. Uh, that, well, that's something else I want to discuss too. This is a all that over. stuff is coming out. Well, the, the one over on, on Hayes Street uh, should come out. Uh, there are also a few tree stumps over by Taft Street, Taft and uh, and Trenton Avenue. You know, if he's got the equipment there, it wouldn't take very much for him to take those stumps out or that, that concrete standard. Now, over on Garfield Street, once again, uh, it's, it's another piece of history. Uh, I'd, I'd like to con contract or contact a contractor, uh, maybe somebody locally, to see if they can't refurbish that. That used to be an old water storage station. For the steam locomotives used to come here and get water. Jimmy, excuse me, those four concrete right. pillars, that's what that was? There used to, be, used to be a tank full of water there. When the steam engines came, they would come and get the water so they could make steam to run their engines. This is a lot of history, historical thing. I don't, it doesn't look like it's well, a lot of money. The problem we seen the other day is there's the manhole was off, and it's pretty deep in, that, in the cement uh, box that's there. And there was a, George is always worrying about, God forbid, somebody falling down into that hole. So we were going to take that piece of cement off and fill that. The four standards, I don't know what it would take to fix them again, but... The one in the front on the right-hand side is pretty bad. Yeah, it's going to fall. The other three really aren't that bad, but, the, but there's some kind of, I don't know what kind of, I don't know if it was a wooden tank or a metal tank, but uh, I, I think it's got some historical significance, and... Uh, you know, if we could save it, maybe restore it, or maybe get some some money from the federal government, uh, being his, you know, historical, uh, you know, we'll look into it before we before we knock it down. But the job looks great. They're doing a nice job, and uh, well, we've been out there twice a day, keeping track of everything that's going on, and they had to bring at least three, four hundred truckloads of dirt back there, at least. That's how many, I mean, they were running trucks. Uh, well, I don't know if we saved any money, because we would have had to cart that dirt away somewhere and pay the dumper, right? Or give it to somebody that uh, would have benefited from it. So our solicitor felt that it was falls under the same contract that we have with Danucci, since we would have had to remove it from site anyway. <clears throat> and we... Uh, well, it's a very, very cost-effective project, and uh, I'm, I'm pleased with the way it's turning out. And the manager, I think, just approved the hydro seating. Uh, they're supposed to do on Wednesday. It was $3,900 to hydro seed an acre of uh, er, in one acre area. Now our guys are supposed to go out tomorrow and do some detailing, like hand raking and stuff like that, to get it ready for Wednesday. So. The project, at that fence added so much to that walking path. It's, I have heard nothing but, you know, great compliments. So, just to bring everybody up on that. The public works building, we're still trying to determine location and different things. Again, we're meeting tomorrow at 930 with the engineers. See how that goes. Everybody took a notice. They started the lights on Jefferson Avenue, taking down the old heads, putting up the new head. The concept is that we continue the same light that's in the Mill Street parking lot along Mill Street, 
Jefferson Avenue. We're going to look at Rackler Street and other areas, replacing them heads with the, the new standard heads. So they started on the 100 block of Jefferson, and they're working down. Uh, this grant application we got for $480,000 from the County Open Space Funds. There's uh, things we're looking at, the floating docks, uh, the bulkhead, and some additional waterfront access. I mean, it's things we'll discuss in the upcoming months on this grant. Lastly, the, we've been meeting with the PBA to try to finalize this union contract for the police officers. I think right now we have about 10 or 12 days into this and some really, really long hours. And uh, we're meeting again Wednesday starting at 1.30, and who knows when it will end, but I don't know if anybody realized they see my car out here every day, how many hours... And just so you know, so far, that a lot of council people have been up to date on what's going on. Councilman Musi's been in part of negotiations. Councilman polensky has been here. Uh, Lorraine's been at some of the negotiations. Betty's and uh, Pat are on the negotiating team. And we had a meeting uh, the other day, and we brought everybody up on different things and I'm not going to get into detail what there are some sticking points right now but I think that PBA is willing to work with us knowing our financial uh, picture and uh, things I'm hoping on Wednesday we pretty much wrap it up there's they're talking to our attorney our attorneys uh, sitting in on the negotiations because there's a lot of legal issues that need to be answered but hopefully on Wednesday we can almost wrap this contract up. And for now, I think that's about it. So I'll start with uh, Mr. Lutz. What else? Do you have anything else? Uh, most of the things that I was going to bring up are already covered. Uh, I did email Angie for some uh, a clarification on some items from the Treasurer's report. Um, I, I don't think I have anything else. So. So, so item number one, Angie, was one of my questions. Was, was an expenditure uh, for interest on the U.S. Bank in the amount of 487000 That 47 comes out of that 660 we pay every month, every year? Yes. Mm -hmm. So 660, 487 is interest? No. 487 is not interest. Pardon me? It's not interest. Hold on. There's, two, there's two payments a year on the rink. March. March 15th is interest, and then the sem September 15th is principal and interest. Yeah, but this is for the year 2010. Yeah. So this would be a combination of both payments, the right. 487. No, that's the second payment. Sorry? Second payment. Right, that's the second payment, which is principal and interest. And then we, had, we had an interest payment in March that was made. That's the way the debt service is set up. The total the is six something. So together, so both payments are 487. No. Okay. No, both payments are six something. Six whatever. 653,000. 653,000. When you add the interest uh, payment in March plus this payment, which is interest and principal, it's a total annual payment of approximately 653,000. That changes every year. I think it's all I have. Are you happy with number two and three? 
Well, the, the thing that was confusing uh, with number three was it was listed as miscellaneous and contingencies. And I really don't know what that means. And the expenditure was $6,830. Uh, I, I think when we talk, this com a police computer paid from the grant. I, I thought we paid that out of that grant we got a few years ago. That, uh, what was it, 125 or 50, one from Fitzpatrick? Technology grant? That was you know, 446000 and the Murphy grant was 93000 Which one? I don't know which computer you're talking about. We, had we got a technology grant before you, before you did the work downstairs. That was from Fitzpatrick? One was... Yes, the first one was from Fitzpatrick, correct. <coughs> okay. So I have. Yeah, a couple of things real quick. Uh, Mr. Dillon, can you update everyone on the uh, Tot Lock Jefferson Avenue? Has it been delivered yet? Uh, no, it hasn't been delivered to the installer. It's supposed to be delivered to the installer this week. Uh, and we should know by the end of the week when they intend to start installation. We feel that uh, installation will occur this month. My phone will probably start ringing within the next week or so. Can you give us a date on the street sweeper? How long is it going to run? Well, I don't care if you ran it all year long. Just we need to know when the people call us. My reaction recommendation to council would be whether permitting that we uh, go. Uh, the last two dates would be Thursday, December 16th, and Friday, December 17th. We, we try and go that long, if the you know weather permitting. That's anything that's too long. I mean, people, the older people, got to get up and move their cars in the morning. And, I mean, I don't have a problem running it through the whole year, but maybe do it on it. If they want to move their car, they move it, or it just doesn't work if that's the... It that way. Why don't we... Uh, I don't know. The next work session? Yeah. I just need a date. Just to tell the people. I mean, if it gets too cold, they can't put the water down anyway. Right. But on it, then you don't want people moving their car for no reason, and then you get blasted with a phone call saying, "Can I move my car?" I mean, Maria's got to take the call, but I don't know. I think it comes to a point where the, once the leaves are picked up and all, I think we should consider suspending service. Anything else, Anthony? Yeah. Good note. Uh, received the letter. I think every council person did. And the letter reads, Dear Council, I'd like to thank the Council for honoring me on Tuesday, October 13, 2010. I am proud to be a Bristolian, and to be recognized in this way meant a lot to me and my family. I intend to continue to work hard and make my town proud of me. Thanks again, Dylan Ever. That was the 14-year-old boy, the baseball player that we honored. He's a class actor kid. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I need Mr. Bill in um, the bathroom to go over the fields, everything to uh, get finished up this weekend. Plus the soccer program is all done over on a set of benches. And uh, Matt Cargill did a great job. He ran the program over there. And I think a couple of them are still going on to the playoffs. So that's all I have. Leo, the screen that the, they use for the fields is – that if George needed that tomorrow to yeah. run that, it's right there. Betty? Right <coughs> I have tonight. Robin. Um, Chief Porter, I'll talk about our, our excursion the other night on Mill Street, but what are the requirements for stop signs on Market Street? I went to a zoning meeting last week that was quite contentious, and the problem is the cars speed from Radcliffe all the way up, and the first stop sign is at Pond Street. And the concern of a lot of the neighbors for the zoning board was the traffic and the children that cross, et cetera. What would be a requirement to put a stop sign either at the 
intersection of Cedar or the intersection of Wood Street? What are your thoughts, I guess, I, I'd want to ask? Not being a state road, highway, we'd be able to put one up, but we would certainly want to take a look at you know, the, the traffic flow there, the kind of accidents we've had along there. I'd, uh, I'd get with our traffic uh, safety officer and see what his thoughts are on that. Uh, generally, you don't establish or don't set up a, a stop sign to control speed. It's to stop, it's just to control the intersection, safely entering an intersection, not to slow traffic down. Um, but we can certainly take a look at it and, and come up with a, a recommendation whether or not one would be provided on Market Street between the Radcliffe and the first, uh, the first one, which is located on Pond Street. Pond Street, and then from Pond to, to, to Pond, it's a, it's a quick stop, and so even if perhaps you moved the one on the pond down and went I, I don't want to take over the, the, you know, the whole flow of traffic there, but it is problematic. Um, and, and what is the other way that you have of slowing down speeders on a, on a borough-owned road? Signage, uh, other traffic coming, uh, see the signage on the roadway or on, as far as signs on poles. And we had talked, and I know that, that it isn't feasible, and I, I'll be honest, I don't remember why. Um, in um, <coughs> Terrace Road in Middletown Township, they have the temporary, what do you call them? Slow down things, <laughs> for lack of a better Speed vocabulary. Bumps. Speed bumps. Speed bumps. And they're, they're very effective, and they're temporary. They're not concrete that adhere to the, to the street. I know that we talked at one point on one of the other roads about that. Is something that we could think about doing here in the borough? Well, they have these the speed humps uh, that are a little bit longer, wider, that um, Gilmore and Associates had, uh, had talked about several years ago when we were talking about the traffic uh, calming on Farragut Avenue. <coughs> Farragut, that's right. It might be something that they may want to recommend. Um, but I've seen them. I've seen them in Doylestown. I've seen them uh, in other locations. They, they are effective. Yes. Um, and the second one, I just want to talk about what you and I did last Wednesday night. We walked on Mill Street. We looked at the first block has a 10-minute uh, drop-off zone for the farm. Well, not for the pharmacy, but in the pharmacy vicinity. Arnie and I talked about one block crossing over each side of Mill Street. One of the thoughts that we both had was, since we're not sure of how this is going to work long term, that we shouldn't spend any serious money in taking a, a meter out. We thought perhaps covering one arm of the meter with a sign that said 10-minute uh, parking between and mark the, 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 the road with two lines so you would hopefully, drivers would know they could park within those two lines for 10 minutes without, uh, you know, incurring any cost to the meter. So. I guess we'll probably ask Mr. Salerno to, to, Bill, would we do that on a temporary basis? In other words, if we're going to change the ordinance, we're not sure it's going to work. <laughs> so how, how would we go about doing that? And does the, the ordinance have to change? Uh, let me look into that. You want to do it temporarily? Well, we want to do it to make, if it doesn't work, it's, it's crazy to either spend money or, or continue with it. So. Is that something we can legally do on a short-term basis? Let's say five months, see if it works, if, it, if it's effective. Then maybe we can implement, implement it more on a, a, a permanent basis. Check it out. Okay. Um, the other thing, Ralph had talked about the public works, and I have seen some of the preliminary sketches that have changed quite frequently. And I've come up here month after month after month and talked about the possibility of having a dog kennel of sorts um, with this public <coughs> works. I think looking at the sketches, my thoughts are that it's going to be impossible to do. But I would like this, this council through even perhaps a, a general consensus to agree that we have to do something. Um, I'd be more than happy to take council on a, a road trip down to where we keep our stray dogs. Um, and they, it's not a pretty sight. And I'd just like this council to uh, agree that we'll do something for the winter. Uh, if we had to do some sort of a shed, that's fine with me. But the facility that we have to keep dogs that are collected, stray dogs, is, is, is terrible. So um, 
I don't know how to address that with council, whether that's something that we just discussed or, but I'm not going to let go of this. So um, I'd like to see us do something to uh, to take care. If we're not going to take care of these dogs in a proper facility, then fire the dog catcher and don't bother. What you do know. we do now, Rob? Are we, are well, we pick them up and we take them to the sewer department. And if you ever have the opportunity, bet you all should go over there. there a long time ago, a couple of years ago. But but it hasn't changed. It's, no. it's, it's three dog houses. It's uh, there's no wind barriers. It's um, it's fencing. There's a hose outside, but I mean there's no there's no uh, comfort from the wind, from the cold. It's well, not we a good. Keep we keep them. Well, we keep them. Mr. Palmer is wonderful. Uh, Mr. Palmer will keep them there for three or four days and see if anybody comes to claim them. If nobody comes to claim them, he actually tries to find owners for them. If he can't get an owner for them, he he's obligated by law to take them up to the SPCA. But there's periods of time where we may have a dog for a week or a week and a half or even two weeks. And and it's just a ter it's just terrible. It's, it's a terrible place just to to throw a dog. And so I, I'd really like this. I'm not going to let go about this. I'm going to come in month after month, whether it's effective or not. Problem? How many dogs does he have? Most amount of dogs he have at one time. We can only have three, uh, uh, Ant, because he only has three pens. But there are times that he'll he have, have all three pens filled. Yes, absolutely. There's times Here. that he does. Go ahead, Mr. Here's D. my theory. Uh, he's sound going to come in month after month. The reason nothing's been done is because we were going to incorporate it in, hopefully, the borough yard. But again, you've seen the sketches. It doesn't look like it's going to happen. If we need to do something down at the borough yard, for, I think it's clean, so the dogs aren't in laying in, uh, you know, their own mess or feces or anything like that. I think Bill does a good job down at the <coughs> borough yard. As far as the winter time, even if we put up a building, it's not going to have heat in it. So I mean, we could go buy a portable shed and have a building put down there, you know, in a day, for $1,500. But again, how do you keep that, you know, wood floors and, and all clean? Is there a place to bring dogs in the winter? It's like in the summer when it's 100 degrees out, they're still out in this pen. So I don't know, I mean, if you want to do something, I say we act on it immediately and let's get it resolved. Well, I think that the issue was... But I don't think anybody's against doing anything. Oh, I don't think anybody in this council's against doing right. anything. The problem is that I felt that as long as we were building a brand right, new facility... Right, we would incorporate it. <laughs> and by incorporating it, it would have heat. It would, it would just be an extension of what you're already building, and it just seemed like it would be most co cost effective. Right, to put it And it air. would have air conditioning. I, the, the, the chief and I, and who went? Oh, Bill Palmer went with us. Uh, how long ago, chief? Five months, six months, seven months ago. And we visited Ben Salem, and we visited Bristol Township, and we went to another dog kennel, and we gathered information, and we took pictures in order to give uh, the architects recommendations on what would be the least expensive and the most effective way to house dogs. And again, just seeing the preliminary sketches, and, and you did just say that probably it's not going to work. I just don't want to let it go. I don't want to just... Uh, what I'm saying is before, if we're going to do something and if it's going to be down at the sewer plant and not here, here I mean, first of all, we got to determine where do we want it. Do we want it at the sewer plant or do we want it here? Everything will work. If, I mean, how, you're not talking a massive building. Right. So if you're talking, you need something 10 feet long and we incorporate it, but do you want the dogs down at this yard or do we want the dogs at the sewer plant? And I think that once we make that determination, whatever we need to do to do it, we should just say, this is the cost. Let's vote on it and get it done. But if we need something temporary for this winter, then we should spend the money. You know, I don't want to have next month, you know, 50 people up here saying we're throwing animals into an unsafe no, environment. No, I've been talking about this for months. No, I know. But nobody's I, shown up to say I anything. Think Bill, I think Bill does a good job, and I think the animals are safe. The elements, yeah, it's cold, but I mean, you know. I think if we were in a situation where it was so cold and we would bring the dogs to the SPCA for the night, even if we had to pay to keep them there. 
but I think we should put this to rest and whatever we need to do, let's get it done. I agree. I, I don't care where they go. I just want to see a proper facility. Tomorrow morning when Gilmore's here at 930, let's, is council okay with giving him the direction to move on this? Okay. And the only other thing is that, and Councilwoman Cullen had talked about it, I believe, last month. Um, as long as Mr. Lutz is emailing to Angie his questions on the treasurer's report, is it necessary for her to attend meetings? Well, she really don't want to be here. I can tell you that it's not something <laughs> she wants to do. That's Mr. Lutz's decision. Uh, she's only here because we don't have the answers for him in, in a split second, and she does. If he wants to deal with it a different way, the borough will be saving money. And she's not looking for the overtime, but I think it comes down to if Mr. Lutz wants to email her and they can work it out that way, that's fine. But to ask me or you or put the manager on a spot in a split second, what's his check number? Which every councilman in the borough for years comes in, meets with the manager, or meets with Angie and gets an explanation on any question they have. I mean, Mr. Polensky works a lot and he's not misses meetings. But that doesn't mean he's not here in the borough constantly or emailing the manager asking what's this expenditure or what's going on and stuff like that. So, Jimmy, it's your call. I mean, if you don't think we need Angie no more, I'm sure she'd rather not be here. You know, part of, part of the problem is that, that I don't get a copy of the treasurer's report till Friday evening. Well, we all get that, not just you. So I don't have a problem emailing her on, by Monday morning because she doesn't come back in the building. She won't get that email until Monday morning. That's fine. Okay, so if if we can eliminate her overtime, that's terrific. But I, is I'm, there ever a question? I'm happy to email it to her. Is there ever a question that you need answered that's that important for that night? I would like her to be here for the budget meeting. Yeah, well, she has to she be here for that. Other than that, she doesn't have to be here. Okay, so, That's fine. I mean, it comes down to your questioning. That's fine. All right. Um, no, I don't. Thank you. Mr. Finished. Dillon. Uh, for uh, next uh, Monday evening, uh, there's a proposed application to PennDOT that council needs to approve if they'd like to uh, ask PennDOT to install a pedestrian traffic signal uh, on Route 13 at 2nd Avenue. They're not guaranteeing that they would approve it. Uh, hopefully they will, and uh, they're saying if it's approved by one of their many sections, uh, it would be installed at PennDOT's cost as part of the uh, Route 13 uh, uh, road improvement projects uh, project. Uh, that project is supposed to start in the spring of 2012. And this uh, safety is, of course, one of the basic uh, reasons uh, why this project has been pushed. It's the number one project in Bucks County uh, as far as PennDOT and the County Planning Commission is concerned. So it's recommended that Council uh, authorizes the filing of the application to PennDOT for the uh, installation and operation of this traffic signal. It will be a pedestrian traffic uh, signal. So people can cross the highway. Uh, next item is the uh, authorize a recycling performance grant uh, to the state by how associates in the amount of five thousand dollars. This is an application that the state requires uh, for our recycling grant. This uh, application is less than. Uh, prior years because the state uh, during the middle of this year they were not going to do any more refunding or grants on recyclables uh, but they have uh, agreed to uh, uh, you know uh, give these grants out but at a significantly uh, reduced uh, rate uh, they are expecting uh, that we will receive twenty nine thousand dollars under this application while in prior years we were receiving in the area of 45,000, I believe. So uh, it's uh, it's a, a proposed agreement with Howe Associates that the council has done for a number of years. Uh, the only other thing that I have, there's a, a memo in your packet from John Miller 
concerning the uh, Pico manufactured uh, gas plant cleanup at Linden and uh, Mifflin. And it's the staff's uh, recommendation that uh, you request a f the uh, formal public notification program uh, be adhered to. Uh, this is, uh, will require more advertising and uh, filing of additional forms with DEP, but I think uh, in the long run it's best that everything is documented and uh, you know, placed in the proper uh, depositories uh, this whole entire process. So it's recommended that at your meeting also that the council votes uh, to request that the formal uh, public notification program be instituted uh, for this project. Jim, what, what, exactly, what exactly is that? Will you explain that to the general public, please? Again, uh, we have been working with uh, PICO, and PICO has an outside uh, independent uh, engineering <coughs> firm that's been working with PennDOT, I mean with uh, PICO, URS is the name of the company. It deals with the uh, manufactured gas plant that was uh, at Mifflin Street back in the mid-1850s. Matter of fact, uh, we got some additional documentation in today. And I've, n I've never seen this picture uh, before, but it's a process uh, where they must go before uh, DEP, file documents, and uh, and have time for public comment. So instead of them just coming in here and trying to uh, satisfy staff, I think it would be prudent long term uh, in the interest of the public and uh, public safety that they go through a the formal process. So that's that's staff's recommendation. And this is regarding the, the place down on Linda and the Mifflin, right? Correct. Right. I guess the question would be or is, is there a particular reason that the staff feels that this this is necessary? I'm I'm just curious, Jim, because I attended the meeting and felt that they they were pretty, pretty I think the staff and the uh, borough engineer uh, feels that it's uh, it's uh, it's an issue that everything should be documented and placed on file instead of just coming in and talking to staff, having a public meeting or two, which they've had over the last year and a half. This has been a, a project that's been going on, I guess, for now about two years mm -hmm. at the site. <laughs> Uh, make sure that a permanent record is kept, that this is the process uh, that uh, it's being recommended. That's all I can tell you. It's, uh, I guess I haven't satisfied uh, what you're asking, but you know, it's, a, it's a formal process. Uh, documentations have to be given uh, to DEP, and they're kept on file, and uh, additional public hearings will be held. <clears throat> There's not, nothing that we know that we're not saying. It's just that the overall feeling of the, the uh, borough engineer and uh, uh, John Miller, who has been uh, mainly my point contact uh, at these various meetings, and Merle Winslow, I believe, has sat in on all the meetings too. Merle, can you add anything to what I'm saying? Uh, I think you sat in on that last meeting. I was in and out with uh, another meeting. Yeah, I, I think. Because in the beginning, the information was slow coming, it was just like, you know, maybe there was more there to meet the eye to the project. And then after the engineer got involved, uh, we were more assured that things were going to be done right through uh, DEP's oversight and uh, the company that's running the project. I just want to make sure that the general public is uh, kept abreast of what's going on so that there's any, if there's any questions that they have, they can be answered right away, not wait until there's another meeting going on. The general public? People that are involved. In that meeting? Yeah. Okay. People that are in the general areas could be affected by it. Okay. Okay. I'm just curious. Got anything else, Jim? Go ahead. Anybody in it? Anybody on the side of the room want to comment on anything? 
Everybody on this side of the room, Mr. Nelson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just anybody that's on the watching TV, if they haven't driven by that Trenton Avenue project with the fence and the, and the, the landscaping being done up there, they really should. A passerby stopped my hat by my house the first day. The first piece of fence went up and said, the fence is going up. Why don't you take a ride over and look at it? And it is absolutely beautiful. The other thing I want to talk about is a lot of residents along Green Lane, and I know it's a state road, are complaining about the potholes and the humps in the road and the noise these tractor trailers make at all times of the hours of the day and night going over them. I've had some conversations with Mr. Dillon. I know he's faithfully been in touch with PennDOT and the powers to be that this is going to be handled. I think you said, Jim, their 2011 budget. That's what and we've been requesting. We've gotten uh, verbal commitments, but nothing's finalized. We're also asking them to do Bath Street also. That's the last uh, last two streets. Th they're the two state uh, roads that they haven't really addressed. I mean, they've done uh, Mill Street and Rackler Street. But, uh, Council could send a letter to our state representatives and, and put some pressure to make sure that these timetables are followed through on or at least try to get it on their agenda so it is done. And the other thing is, do we have an engine brake law in, in, in the borough? Do you know what an engine brake is? I'm sure you do with the diesel trucks. They make that, like the Jake brake, they call them as a nickname, Jacob brake. Because I'll tell you, some of the noises from these trucks coming up, up Green Lane <coughs> actually rattle the windows as they let off their accelerator and that Jake brake kicks in. I mean, it's, it's a wonder it hasn't broken windows. That's how loud it is. And you can hear them up in Green Lane, so I don't know if do we have an ordinance against that. Or I know that we, Jim's been on top of this uh, with PennDOT, with the couple of them humps in the road. If we could just take them out right now, because when they come up that hill, they're hitting that, and if they don't have a load in the truck, the whole trailer is bouncing. Uh, that's been a, an ongoing issue, but they did promise us in 2011 they were going to repave Green Lane and Bath Street. Okay. So hopefully that happens. Very good. Thank you. Uh, two other things. I'm glad we didn't adjourn. One, uh, I mentioned council has been involved in these negotiations, but also the mayor sat in on one of the negotiations. So we're trying to keep everybody informed of what's going on. If council thinks you want to have an executive session before we leave, I could bring you up on where we are five minutes. Uh, real quick uh, overview of the contract and Mrs. Collin also chief told me to mention on Trenton Avenue uh, there seems like to be a lot of work going on at night with the tracks the low lines where they're moving box cars from car to car and then they back into I guess it's Lumberman's or something Merle back in there where do they come off and back in but it's happening between like 10 o'clock at night and 3 o'clock in the morning. And she wanted, she's getting complaints from some people along Trenton Avenue. I want to know if this noise ordinance uh, also affects them since they're a private company or utility or how's that work, Billy? Can we okay. enforce? I think it applies to anybody. It's making noise. Can you maybe put some... Uh, details out there just drive by and if they're out there 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock or I mean we have a noise ordinance that after a certain time should stop but they're banging these box cars uh, all hours of the nights which never happened before so I don't know what prompt this to start but a lot of people said you know they're used to the train going by but now with this additional moving box car, car to car and offloading during the night is starting to become a nuisance for the kids got to get up for school and all. So it's that last stretch of Trenton Avenue. Okay? Yeah, I know we used to have complaints when uh, Amtrak used to work on the track. And they, we asked them to work on the day. And they, of course they're not working on the track. They're actually moving cars during the night. So they may, you know, offload five cars and back up and then bang in switch okay. tracks and grab and then they get this whole 10 15 cars and they bring them into 
down where Lumberman's it or, or back in that area, and it's just constant. They've been doing this for the last maybe three or four weeks. So she asked me if you can uh, talk to the mayor or whatever and see if we could send a car by there every so often and see what's going on. Okay. I don't know how they're going to get in now because the fence is up. Earl? You may also want to think about parking the engine and not shutting it off and that you'll have that noise running all night. They could put the engine up behind the A.B. Murray building or somewhere on the other side of Green Lane and you wouldn't hear the noise probably be better. And Arnie, on uh, Canal and Washington, the tractor trailers again, start getting a handle on this. They're starting, you know, they're turning on the sidewalks, blowing their horn, idling the trucks. I mean, we're coming into the winter, and that's usually when all this stuff starts again. The other day they had three 18-wheelers parked there. You couldn't make the left to get up Canal Street. Off of Jefferson, mm -hmm. you made the left. They had one in the bay. They had one on the sidewalk, and then they had one behind the bay where they load. Anything else? Anybody have anything before we adjourn? The vote tomorrow. Go vote. Thank you.